Well, good day, everyone. How's it going? Coming at you from the home studio from isolation, and we're kind of in a in a lockdown stage three, they call it here in Australia. So the fact that we're all in this together in this crazy time is crazy. That's all I'll say about that. But uh, everything else going really well. I'm really well. Family is all really well. So it's been a bit of a minute since I've done a video and I wanted to come at you. I've just actually purchased a second EOS R body and I'm pivoting a little bit at the moment into live streaming. And so I've got a two camera setup that I can use for live streaming and I'm gonna show some information on how I'm setting that up and how I'm gonna be running that. But today I wanna to talk about the touch bar and some things that I've worked out and figured out with how to best set up the touch bar on the EOS R. It's actually a little bit disappointing that I've gotten super used to the touch bar, but we know it's not coming out on the EOS R5. So one of the disappointments there. Uh, I know a lot of people hate the touch bar, but I actually like it. And I think it's really good. And once you're used to it, you don't really get false presses or anything like that. So let me take you through the settings, the way that I think you could have it set up as well. We can run through those and see what you think. So here we are guys at the back of my camera and I'll just show you how I've got this set up. Basically, I have the lock button enabled for the touch bar. So no false touches can happen. Um, you know, if I'm just mucking around, it's locked, it's good to go. So when I unlock it from the lock button at the top, then what I've got is on this side, I've got my histogram, toggle on, toggle off. Sometimes I'll have a subject in this area of the frame and I can't really see what's going on there. So I have that so I could toggle it. And then on the other side, I have my 10 times zoom. So I can then grab critical focus uh, with my 10 times zoom and then jump straight back out. Now, the reason for that is you normally go for a 10 times zoom. And for example, you have to grab this guy right down here, which is a big jump of your hand down to there. And then to get back out, it's not a click on the same place. You have to then find the other piece to get back it out. Uh, the other one is over on this side here. You click that, then you're in the info set for the 10 times zoom. So then you actually have to go and click the info button. You can click this info button here, which gives you five times zoom. Then you can get 10 times zoom. So there's like one, two, three clicks, and then you've got to get out of this. So you can get out by the menu button, but, um, or you can't get out by the menu button actually, sorry. So if you go here, let's see that here, info button, info button, and then maybe the shutter button. Half press shutter, doesn't get you out either. So you've literally got to go and press this. Menu button doesn't get you out because menu button takes you to the menu. So you've literally got to go then and press this button there to set it. You might better use, hang on, let me try this one more. Sorry, bear with me here. Uh, I'm also learning to so info button, info button, and then set. Okay, the set button can get you out. But again, it's six press or something. So this, I just go like that and I'm already 10 times zoom. So that for me is just a game changer. And so that's kind of how I have this all set up. Then the lock button, uh, sorry, then I've also got here, just unlock it again, uh, my Kelvin. Um, so I can just dial in my Kelvin, take the histogram off and then start recording like that. And when I hit record, I've got a few of the other things that come off the screen as well. But basically now I'll hit the lock button. So controls are locked and that means I can't false press anything on the touch button. Now setting this up is actually a little bit tricky and um, I didn't know this until I actually grabbed a camera that where it wasn't set up this way. Um, I just picked up a new one, as I, as I said, a new EOS R, another EOS R, not a new one secondhand, but another one. So basically now when I go into the custom settings, I can show you it's the fourth uh, setting across and you've got custom buttons, custom dials, and you've got the custom multi-function bar. So in here, it's funny because the preset is actually somewhere like this, maybe ISO speed or the preset is maybe white balance. So you've actually got to, uh, I'll just quickly go back into this. So you've got a custom function bar, white balance, now you would think that you could then set these from here. This is the caveat, this is the issue. You'd think you could just set them from here quite easily, but actually you have to click on this first. You have to press on that and then it opens up the shooting functions. Now you can think, okay, cool, I'll do it, I'll do, I wanna do, you know, ISO on the top one, I wanna do movie recording on the second one and flexible priority, but it doesn't actually let you do it. So let's go white balance. 
Okay, got white balance on that one, great. All you've got is white balance Kelvin and off. Okay, so we'll click, go back to white balance. All I've got is these. Okay, go back to this. All I've got is those again. So it's not actually giving me what I want in this menu. What you have to do is you've got to click on that. You have to then scroll all the way down to the second from the bottom, which is user customization. User customization. Then it unlocks everything. And you've got the top scroll wheel here. If you see my finger here, um, then I can scroll through and get everything that's available. So this is the way I do it. So the first one I'm gonna set as my um, ISO speed, which is gonna, sorry, not my ISO speed. I actually want that to be my white balance in Kelvin. So I always use a manual Kelvin white balance to set my white balance. And then the next one I've got is the left tap is, well, it's already set. So I've got the um, magnifying glass and you know, 10 times zoom that one is, and the right tap is the histogram. So normally these would be, uh, you know, this might be set already to, when you come into this anyway, you might find that this is set to one, like in the Kelvin in white balance, here we go. So you might find it is set to something like this, um, you know, off or something in the Kelvin. If I go, actually what it would be set to is, if I choose Kelvin, let's have a look here. So let me choose white balance. This is kind of often what you would see. So white balance, um, so this one would be Kelvin. This one would be, yeah, Kelvin left, Kelvin right. So they kind of be like this, um, maybe custom, maybe off, something like that. That's kind of how it would be set normally. And you know, then if you went to, no, I don't want white balance, I want to do movie recording. Then you'd have the ability to, okay, I can record, I can do, volume level up and down, you know, swiping, record, left, reduce audio, reduce audio. You know, we could have, um, you know, focusing, like it's only giving me focusing and nothing else here, right? Weird, it's like focusing and focus guide and, but I'm actually, it's weird because I'm actually in movie recording. So I don't know what, what it's all about. Like I don't get that. So anyway, that's what I don't understand. So that's why double clicking that, user customization, um, and then yeah, Kelvin, and then this one's going to be set to my, um, all the way through to, what do I have it set to? Uh, this one, Oop, no, not histogram, magnify, histogram for that one. And we get out of there and then you've got locked, I'll unlock it. And you've got histogram, you've got. 10 times zoom, it's quite poppy, you know, it's quite punchy, 10 times zoom. You can see it's adjusting the white balance a little bit because I'm not doing a very clean click, but I'll dial that in first. Then I'll dial in my white balance and lock it off. And so now I know where my white balance is. And if I want to check my white balance, I can just pull up Instagram again. And you know, it's not a, it doesn't run that fast. It's pretty good, so you can check that where you are, so 4,500 Kelvin, and I can lock that in on this camera, lock it in on the next camera, and go from there. So hopefully that's helpful. Uh, I'll jump back over to the other camera and say a few more things about it. So that is how I set up uh, the touch bar on the EOS R, just to make it super functional for the way that I shoot. Hopefully that was helpful and you got something out of it. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a few more videos on the EOS R. One of them is gonna be on my setup. Now, I had the original Elgato Cam Link. Um, I could show you that right now here. And this little guy has been awesome for live streaming and stuff. So I'm gonna be doing a video, not just particularly on this, but actually on the HD 60 S plus. So one thing is that I'm doing some live streaming at the moment with all this coronavirus stuff going around, the lockdowns and everything, companies are wanting to live stream. So I, if I can encourage you in anything as producers and video creators that you could probably also offer this to your clients as well. Uh, they might be interested right now or in a few weeks even when things start to really slow down just to get in front of their audience do a live stream or two maybe. And so that can be something that you can work with. But now these are kind of sold out everywhere at the moment. So I think the three week wait or a month long wait. And I even went to just get a simple HDMI cable to go from the Canon EOS R, the micro HDMI uh, into these 
into the cam link and this uh, HD 60 S plus the gaming um, capture device and I couldn't even get the cable that I wanted so I had to kind of search around to get a cable so there's a massive shortage on all live streaming gear and equipment at the moment but that means that I had to be a bit creative and I picked up the HD 60 and basically it's one of these and this is actually for specifically uh, for a game capture. So this is supposed to just capture your computer screen. And I actually worked uh, worked out that this was gonna be also really good for capturing 4K from the EOS R. And so I've got that home. It was a bit of a gamble. I hadn't seen much on online about it. So I picked one up and sure enough, it works perfectly for this purpose. So taking the 4K signal out of the EOS R and putting it through to like OBS or something on your computer system and then you can live stream from that. So it's worked out really well. And the awesome thing is that I can do a 4K image and I've got right now on this camera, I've got the Leiwa 12 millimeter zero D lens. So 4K and this is super wide, really nice shot. And I can actually do two different shots and I'll just show you on the screen now what that looks like. Um, so I can live stream two separate shots and I can switch it from my computer as I go. So. I can live stream, you know, anything from here, like I can live stream a wide shot and a tight shot. Um, so, you know, if I'm talking close up stuff or if I'm in a client meeting or if I'm wanting to live stream to a wider audience, I can have that creativity of having two shots and having a bit more engagement. Uh, and so I can do all that through OBS. So I'm gonna do a few videos on this because I know this is something that clients are gonna be asking you about in the next you know, weeks and months ahead as this whole coronavirus thing kind of plays out. And you know, all I'll say is keep keep innovating in this time and be safe out there. You know, stick to the rules as best you can. You want to keep safe as best you can, and, and you know, you want to be healthy on the other side of all of this, especially uh, those that are less fortunate and and vulnerable. You know, in our communities. So that's all I'll say, you guys. Hope you got something out of this video, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.